All right, praise the Lord and glory to God. This is 2019. I want to welcome you to the Light of Life broadcast tonight. You will be blessed. From Life Church International, my name is Apostle David Juma. We are trusting God, the Word of God will have an impact in your life. We are dealing with a theme at the beginning of the year, possessing the gates of our enemies. This is a promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 22 verse 17 and it's now fulfilled in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ, then everything was, that was promised to Abraham shall be yours. And we believe this word will bless you. And we are trusting God. If you are in the city and you are able to access Nairobi, Kenya Cinema Plaza, uh, right in Moy Avenue in the city center is where we are ministering from and worshiping the Lord. And you are welcome for our Sunday services at 9 a.m. We are trusting God. You will enjoy moments of worship and the ministry of the word. Every morning, Monday to Friday, we have morning glory and also lunch hours at uh, 12.45. We believe the word of God will have an impact in your life. We believe as you watch this message, something good is going to happen. And then at the end, I'm going to pray with you. Let's trust God together. You will possess the gates of your enemies. In other words, God's kingdom is coming. And let the kingdom of God that is inside of you overpower everything else that you find out there. So God bless you and welcome in Jesus' name. Go to Genesis. Uh, is all on the screen and it's also behind me. 22 verse... Uh, 16 and saying by myself I have sworn says the Lord because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son your only son blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you uh, your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sad which is at the seashore on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies in your seed the next verse all the nations of the earth shall be blessed why because you have obeyed my voice May God bless his word. It's amazing when God sent instructions to Abraham. That chapter 22 is a chapter you need to read and read and read so that you can uh, refresh your mind regarding this story. God was trying to do something amazing to prepare for the coming and the, indeed the sending of his son Jesus into the world. And so he picks Abraham, his friend, whom, who had received a promise in Genesis uh, 12, verse 1, when God called him from the wool of the Chaldeans, and then he spoke a blessing to him and said, get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. God wanted to use Abraham as a sample so that later when he brings his only begotten son, we will be remembering that there was an act, a prophetic act done by God using his friend Abraham. Because you and I are friends of God, and I hope you are still a friend of God, may he do some prophetic acts through you so that the generations that will come after you They'll be calling you a patriarch and a matriarch. Uh, you'll be referred to in your family as a man, woman of faith who was there and did major things that opened up a door for your descendants to walk in the same blessing. And so he used Abraham and told him here in verse 2 in Genesis 12 that I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. You will be so blessed until you become a blessing. Wow. May that be a portion. We'll come to that later. Verse 3. He also made a very powerful statement. He said, I will bless those who bless you. And will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This journey with Abraham is amazing. And in Romans chapter 4. We'll not go there now. 
Paul talked about the faith of Abraham and uh, what he spoke to him when he was preparing to bring forth his first son Isaac. Abraham is such a man who walked with God. And in chapter 22, if you read from verse 1, just maybe two, three verses uh, of Genesis 22, just to remind ourselves, the Bible says something. Can you go to there? Genesis 22, verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am, verse 2. And he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which, of which I will tell you. Just one of the mountains. Just begin the journey. As you begin to go, I will tell you. Then verse 3, so Abraham did what? Rose early in the morning. So this is how his obedience was tested. In the morning, he woke up early and went. In other words, when he heard the message, he did not say, let me pray about it. Like we do in our day. He obeyed immediately, praise God. And I pray this year, remember, the scripture says, and God tested Abraham. Remember this year, there are things God will ask you to do, not because of anything, not that he needs your money, not that he needs you to lead it to prayer and, and make your voice hoarse. What he's doing, he's testing you. He is setting you up so that he can release a blessing. Glory to God. May you be able to hear the voice of God this year and obey everything he is saying. Because you obeyed my voice. Because finally he laid the son there on the altar and he was ready with a dagger to, you know, sacrifice his son. And God spoke and said, no, don't touch the young man. Don't touch the lad, you know, and so forth. I provided a ram caught in the thicket. There it was. And God said, now I know, praise God. Things that God is testing us to do this year, it is because he wants to know what is in our heart? He wants to know what is in us. And then the major thing that we get out of this is that because Abraham obeyed, something happened. Praise God. There are certain keys that if we activate them and follow them and do it obediently, God will cause us this year to possess the gate of of our enemies. Praise God. Now, this Abrahamic promise that is in Genesis 22, it shows up in the New Testament. Are you listening to the word? Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. These are common verses just to see the connection. The Bible say in Galatians 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cast is everyone who hangs on a tree. So when Jesus was hanging on the tree, it was like a curse. And the curse came on him. And then verse 14 gives a reason. The reason is why he died on the tree, on the cross, is so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus is the son of Abraham. And therefore, through him, the blessing that God spoke to Abraham can now reach us who are in the nations as Gentiles. Also, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. How do we come to Christ? It's through faith. When you put your faith in Christ, then Jesus becomes your Lord and you become a follower of him. He comes into your life. Then guess what? The package called Christ in Christ, that package that Christ that comes into your life, in that package is the Abrahamic blessing. Is the Abrahamic blessing. Glory to God. And how will this blessing of Abraham reach the Gentiles? It will call for us to embrace the promise of the Spirit. Wherever the Holy Spirit moves and goes, he goes to impart and to bring the blessing of Abraham. And how does the spirit of God go there? Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says, And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach 
the good news to the poor every time the good news is preached the holy spirit moves and the holy spirit upon the speaker and the herald of the good news is actually telling the nations and the gentiles this the act is this is the acceptable year of the lord and as you receive the message of christ guess what that original blessing that god promised abraham will also become to those who come by faith even to receive the message and to receive christ are we together and that's why we must preach the gospel of christ everywhere so that nations can receive this abrahamic blessing listen if we're going to possess the gates of our enemies there is something that is very important we need to embrace now go back to galatians 3 we read up to verse 14 but look at verse 16 now to abraham and his seed were what the promises made he does not say to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed capital s who is christ mm. so jesus christ is the one with the promise that he shall possess the gate of his enemies the descendant christ christ is a trigger that triggers a generation to possess the abrahamic blessing whatever jesus inherits you and i shall also inherit he is the captain of our salvation He's the one leading us into triumph. He's the one leading us to uh, our inheritance in God. And the victory of Jesus is our victory. Wherever Christ wants to go, he goes in us and through us. Praise God. And that's how we come into connection of this promise. Somebody say promise. And one of the things I want to share with you very quickly is this word promise. And let you know that one of the ways in which we shall possess the gate of our enemy is by embracing the promises of God. Did you hear what I say? Embracing the promises of God. How many promises of God are there in the Bible? That's your new study. Go find every promise there is in the Bible. Because when you embrace the promise of God, you will possess the gate of your enemy. Praise God. Every promise that you find. Let me show you what the Bible says about promise. Go to Hebrews. Now that the engine is running. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 34. For you had compassion on me in my chains. And joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods. Knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession look at that for yourselves in heaven okay by the way when i was reading this I've, a couple of days ago i felt like uh, for me it is paul who wrote the letter to the hebrews uh, because i think to me there's a second evidence because he's one of although everybody was jailed but he's one of those who literally was always in chains and we have evidence in other places he also wrote when he was in chains. He was still writing even when he was in jail. Mm. So he says, you accepted my being in chains. You accepted the persecution and the trouble you went through, including your goods were plundered. Why? Because you are knowing in your mind that you have a better and an enduring possession in heaven. So though you are going through trouble here, you didn't mind. You stood strong because you knew in heaven the possession is better. Even if I lose these goods now, there is something greater. Are we together? Look at the next verse. Therefore, I like the word therefore there because it's coming from behind to show us something. Do not cast away your confidence which has a great reward. Somebody say confidence. Every time you see this theme, possessing the gate of our enemy, you need to have confidence and don't cast it away. Hold on to this promise because something is going to happen. Praise God. Do not cast away your confidence. It has a great reward. Look at the next verse 36. For you have need of endurance in 2019. So that after you have done the will of God, 
you may receive the promise. Hallelujah. Anytime God's people embrace the promises of God, what has God said concerning your family, concerning ministry, concerning your business, concerning your life? What has God said? When you endure, persevere, keep embracing that promise and constantly doing the will of God, I tell you, you will receive everything God ever said. Are we together? Listen to me. When we started this church 18 years ago or so, January 9th, the year 2000, and all that year, many, many promises God gave us. My visions and the dreams I was seeing those times were strange, powerful, showing how the future will be like. When I look at where we are, we haven't even come to that future I was seeing. So I'm still pursuing ministry, enduring, believing God one day is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Some things have happened. Many are the things that are on the way. It's very important to understand God will bring you to possess what he has for you in heaven and on earth if you embrace his promises. Are you listening? Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 3 and 4. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Keep that there. Listen. God's power is called divine power. This year God is releasing an anointing called divine power. That is going to help us to receive and to partake and to have everything that we need to have in life. Glory to God. But let me tell you the formula in that verse. By knowing Jesus more. The more you embrace Christ and have knowledge of him. Praise God. That's how divine power is going to begin to release to us amazing things. Look at the next verse. The Bible says, by which... We have given, I mean, has been, have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Somebody say promises. If you embrace the promises of God, which the Bible is calling great, they are exceedingly great. Uh, they are precious promises. If you embrace these promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. That divine power that was referred to in the previous verse. And this divine nature. We shall be partakers. We will share in what God wants us to share in 2019. Because we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through last. We have shifted into Christ. We have shifted into the kingdom. We now have a new life, a new nature and so forth. God promises his divine power is going to help us possess our gates or the gates of our enemies. In other words, we shall be partakers. Somebody say partakers. I declare this year you shall be a partaker of everything that God is saying if you embrace his promises. Hallelujah. And so, there are some practical things that I want to share with us. Uh, how many of them? Just seven key words and phrases that we need to embrace and we're going to see them manifest this year. As we possess the gates. Glory to God. Some are action words. Things we need to act on. And some are, others are things that God is already releasing in our midst. The first one is the word obedience. I mentioned that earlier. Obedience. We need to be obedient this year to his word. Because listen to this. Our obedience is a prophetic activator of us possessing the gates. If you obey, you'll activate the possessing and you being a partaker of the grace of God. Hallelujah. Our obedience. God told Abraham, because you have done this thing. I like what the preacher said yesterday. That this year, those who give like crazy, they will activate things that they have never seen in their lives. That's a level of obedience. If you study scripture, everybody who went to the next level in the Bible, there was always a test God gave them. And when they passed the test, bang, it came to pass. And our obedience this year 
is going to be the prophetic voice, which is the activator of us to come into possession. Now, let's take a journey in Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're going to read from verse 10. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt, which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. Wow. I think Egypt was not bad. <laughs> I'm not going back to the watermelons, but Goshen was amazing. But now he's saying, the land which you go to possess is not like Egypt. Are we together? Are you still ready, you guys, to possess the land? But the land which you cross over to possess is the land of hills and valleys, which it drinks water from the rain of heaven. And it disappears. A land for which the Lord your God cares. Hmm. Let me tell you, what you're about to possess this year is something that the Lord cares about. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. Hey. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. The eyes of the Lord are upon that thing he wants you to possess. He's looking, he's caring for it and his eyes always on it. Hey. What belongs to you this year? God has, has uh, touched it. God is looking at it. He's looking at it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year until you arrive. Amen. Hallelujah. And guess what? In Canaan, because this is Canaan, uh, here some people arrived. In Canaan, I think we're still on the journey. <laughs> in Canaan, there were nations there. There were very strong tribes. There were seven nations there. But guess what? God's eye was still on that so that they don't mess the land. And he was keeping his eye on them saying, you guys, I'm about to send people to remove you. Very soon you'll be out of here. Very soon you'll be taken over. Some people are going to possess. His eye was always on you. Glory to God. Hey. We have not finished. We're going to read a lot of verses in this chapter. But put that on hold. Because you have ten, verse, ten fingers. Put your finger there. Open uh, with the other finger. Uh, Haggai chapter 2. Verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. Hey. Haggai is telling them, read verse 4. Haggai is telling them, you Zerubbabel, get ready to work. Go back to verse 4 because there are children here and they need to see the context. Yet now, be strong Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Be strong Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong all you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord is with us this year. So, all the leaders, work. Let me make something very powerful. Uh, it's beginning to adjust my thinking and how I approach apostolic ministry. God is not necessarily looking for leaders. He's looking for workers. Don't just say I'm a leader at Life Church. The question will be this year. Are you a worker? Sela. See you, Sarah. Sela. Pause and think. So, these guys have returned from Babylon. You are now in the land. In the chapter before, Haggai was telling them, You guys, you have a problem. When you have money, you put it in your pocket, pocket have holes. <laughs> Every time you plant, you don't harvest. You are in trouble in the land since you came. Because when you came, you built your house first and you forgot the house of God. You live in paneled houses, but the house of God lies in ruins. Consider your ways. And then in the chapter, they lay the foundation. Then now he's telling Zerubbabel is the, uh, the, the governor, the leader, and the priest, and the people. Everyone be strong and work. And then he tells them in verse 5. I think you understand the context. Now verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. I say to you, Life Church, the spirit of God remains in our midst. We are not dry. The spirit is here. The Lord is here. The spirit of God is in your family. Is in your life. 
And therefore, don't be afraid. You will still arrive where you need to go. You will still arrive. I declare you will arrive. The purpose and the vision of this house shall be accomplished. You will arrive. Hallelujah. Everybody shall possess, shall enjoy the blessing of the Lord. You will arrive. Glory to God. Go with me. Go with me. Psalms 84. 84 verse 3. 84 verse 3. No, no. Verse 1. Verse 1. This is how Israel, how they longed for the temple. This is how they longed. They said, how lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. You know, Israel always thought, wow, that temple that is built in uh, Jerusalem is a nice place. We hear that's where God lives. So those who are down in Galilee, wherever, wherever, they kept longing. They oh, how lovely are your temples and tabernacles, O God. Look at the next verse. Let's quickly, my soul longs, yeah, even fades for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Look at how they live long. Even they had this cry. Verse 3, the Bible says what? Even the sparrow has found a home. Ah, they're saying in that temple, Kunanyon is in Alara Uko. <laughs> and even the swallow nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. He's saying, right in that temple, I long for it. Because even Nyoni, Ziko Huko, the birds of the air. They longed. Verse 4. I tell you. They say, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Then they are outside. They are far. They long to make a journey. And go to the house to praise the Lord from the house. But they say, wow. Those who dwell there are so blessed. Verse 5. Uh, blessed is the man whose strength is in you. Whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Alright. Israel. All these Israel. They long to make journeys and travel. And go to the temple. Look at verse 6. And they passed through the valley of Baca. You know, as they made the journeys, they passed through the valley of weeping. Called the valley of weeping. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. You know, as we go on our journey, sometimes there could be some little weeping. But it's okay. Don't worry. It's not where you're going to do. It's, you are just passing through. They pass through. Uh, they pass through. Just in case you meet tears this year, don't stay there. Pass through. Well, glory to God. Thank you for tuning in to this message. We want to pray with you. We trust Jesus, the one who's given us the word, is able now to reach you and touch you in a special way. I agree with you by faith that you can have a transformation of your life. And those who are not born again, this is the time to open up your heart that whatever God has promised his church can also be part of your life. And if you receive Jesus, I tell you, your life will begin in a fresh way. He will forgive your sins. He washes them with the blood of Jesus. He gives you hope. He'll give you love. And I tell you what, your life will never be the same again. So, can we pray together right now? Father God, I pray with this viewer, in the name of Jesus, let the glory of God be revealed, let the power of God be revealed, let salvation come to their life. In the name of Jesus, pray with me. Why don't you say, Lord Jesus Christ, I've heard the word, and today I humble myself. I ask you to come into my life. I believe in my heart. And now I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the glory of God, the presence of God. I bless your family. And may you walk in divine health. May you walk in divine grace. And let's gather and worship together. We believe Jesus Christ shall continue to change this nation through the gospel. We are contributing the little we can through bringing this message through this television channel. May you tune in every week and enjoy the presence of God. Shalom, we'll see you soon.